we have, we have come to the end of a long journey. The American people have spoken, and they have spoken clearly. A little while ago, I had the honor of calling Senator Barack Obama to congratulate him. Please. To congratulate him on being elected the next president of the country that we both love. In a contest as long and difficult as this campaign has been, his success alone commands my respect for his ability and perseverance. But that he managed to do so by inspiring the hopes of so many millions of Americans who had once wrongly believed that they had little at stake or little influence in the election of an American president is something I deeply admire and commend him for achieving. This is an historic election, and I recognize the special significance it has for African Americans and for the special pride that must be theirs tonight. I've always believed that America offers opportunities to all who have the industry and will to seize it. Senator Obama believes that too. But we both recognize that though we have come a long way from the old injustices that once stained our nation's reputation and denied some Americans the full blessings of American citizenship, the memory of them still had the power to wound. A century ago, President Theodore Roosevelt's invitation of Booker T. Washington to, visit, to dine at the White House was taken as an outrage in many quarters. America today is a world away from the cruel and prideful bigotry of that time. There is no better evidence of this than the election of an African American to the presidency of the United States. Let there be no reason now let there be no reason now for any American to fail to cherish their citizenship in this, the greatest nation on earth. <laughs> Senator Obama has achieved a great thing for himself and for his country. I applaud him for it and offer in my sincere sympathy that his beloved grandmother did not live to see this day. Amen. Though our faith assures us she is at rest in the presence of her creator, and so very proud of the good man she helped raise. Senator Obama and I have had and argued our differences, and he has prevailed. No doubt many of those differences remain. These are difficult times for our country. And I pledge to him tonight to do all in my power to help him lead us through the many challenges we face. I urge all Americans, I urge all Americans who supported me to join me in not just congratulating him, but offering our next president our goodwill and earnest effort to find ways to come together to find the necessary compromises to bridge our differences and help restore our prosperity, defend our security in a dangerous world, and leave our children and grandchildren a stronger, better country than we inherited. Whatever our differences, we are fellow Americans. And please believe me when I say, no association has ever meant more to me than that. It is natural, it's natural tonight to feel some disappointment, but tomorrow we must move beyond it and work together to get our country moving again. We fought, we fought as hard as we could, and though we fell short, the failure is mine not yours. I am so... I am so deeply grateful to all of you for the great honor of your support and for all you have done for me. 
I wish the outcome had been different, my friends. The road was a difficult one from the outset, but your support and friendship never wavered. I cannot adequately express how deeply I indebted I am to you. I'm especially grateful to my wife, Cindy, my children, my dear mother, <laughs> my dear mother and all my family and to the many old and dear friends who have stood by my side through the many ups.